Uh, before we get too far, I just want to thank everyone for watching this morning and tonight. I uh, also wanted to just uh, give a few announcements. Uh, nothing's going to be going on for the next month. I just want to let y'all, y'all probably figured that out, but I just wanted to help you know that. Uh, you know, today we were supposed to have uh, dinner on the grounds. I'm still weeping just a little bit about that. And uh, we were supposed to have a baptism service this morning. Uh, a, lot, a lot of things. But you know what? Christ is still king. And there are still many things that we need to be praying for. And there are much more things we can look ahead towards. But uh, our chief thing is we want to pray that everyone stays healthy and that we all make it through this crisis together and that we would continue to be the church that God always intended us to be and what he prayed for. And in saying that, there are some names that we're lift up tonight for prayer and we're just going to do some prayer requests. And I know some of you might want to lift up some names and if you'd like to type in some names, We'll pray for those, and if we don't uh, get them tonight, we'll pray for them our, at our Wednesday night Bible study. But let's uh, spend some time in prayer and lift up the names that I do have. Would you all pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your power, your glory, how you move across the earth. And no matter what trouble that we face, Father, you are greater than that trouble. And Lord, we do want to continue to lift up our country, uh, all of its leaders. Father, we pray for our community and the, the cities around us. Lord, that you would continue to give us wisdom. And Lord, that you would continue to speak to us and give us a strength to help each other through this. And Lord, before any of this hits, there are many other people who are already struggling with different sicknesses, ailments, cancer treatments. Lord, uh, some people had surgeries they were looking forward to having. And Lord, uh, none of that has changed. We just have much more going on. And Lord, we want to lift up each case and each person. Uh, Father, we do want to lift up and continue to pray uh, for Jimmy Garrett. Lord, I want to pray for his salvation. Lord, I lift up Gina Crawford to you. Father, I pray for Marty Brinson. Lord, we lift up Peggy Jenkins to you. Father, I lift up Brother Hans. Lord, be with a Sister Barbara Moore. Lord, we want to pray for Tammy Hudson. Lord, that you be with her and her family. God, we lift up Carol Gaskin to you. And Father, we lift up the Gibson family. Lord, that you just comfort them during this time as they mourn the loss of a loved one. Lord, we lift up Mike Cruz to you. We pray for Shelby Skelton. Lord, we lift up Leon Carpenter to you and the Schilling family. Lord, we want to pray for them that you give them grace and comfort. And Father, we want to pray for all of the students who are out of school right now. Lord, we pray for their parents, God, that you would continue to give them strength and, and patience and endurance, Lord, as they work together to get the school done. And Lord, we lift up the school system and all the teachers, Lord. Uh, so many changes are happening right now. And Father, I'm glad that you never change. Your spirit, your word, your power never changes. Uh, thank you for this time that we can pray to you and worship you in this way. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, our Savior, and our soon and coming King. Amen. Amen and amen. Uh, we are going to turn now into our Bibles uh, to the Gospel of John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And we are going to be starting at verse 20. John chapter 12, verse 20. And we're going to read a good bit of John chapter 20 together tonight. Uh, John 12, verse 20. Uh, and we're going to read verse 43. If you would, go ahead and take your Bibles. Turn to John chapter 12, verses 20 through 43. John 12, starting at verse 20 through 43. And when you get there, say amen or type it. Amen. Uh, you can say it to the person at your side. John chapter 12, starting verse 20 to 43. And this is what took place in the life and times of Jesus and the apostles. Now there was certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. 
Philip came and told Andrew, and then in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore the people who stood by heard it and said that it had thundered. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. The people answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ would remain forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed, and was hidden from them. But although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which spoke, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should open their eyes and see, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Least they should be put out of their synagogue, for they love the praise of men more than they love the praise of God. Will you all pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. God, I thank you for how you moved and worked in the lives of the disciples. And how you showed how you showed them beautiful moments, Lord, that they recorded for us. And the very precious words of Jesus. Thank you so much, much for your word. And God, I, I pray, Lord, that you would move my flesh aside. Lord, that you would take any anxiety that I have and put your Holy Spirit there. Father, that you would take any fear that I have and fill it with faith. Lord, that you would take any tiredness that I have and Lord, turn it into energy. Uh, Father, that we would know that God was speaking tonight. And your spirit is with us and all over around this area. Whoever is watching, that your spirit is there with them. Uh, Father, I thank you for using us in such a way. And I pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. Uh, the people thought they heard thunder. Some thought they heard an angel. But nevertheless, God spoke in this beautiful moment of time. As Jesus is nearing his time of passion. Now, I know that maybe some of you might have heard God speak to you before. Uh, my father, uh, years ago, he told me this story that uh, when he was going to Northwoods Mall, I don't know how many of y'all have been there, amen, how many of y'all have been to Northwoods Mall? Uh, some of us, we, we go there because we have to. Uh, my dad, I don't know what, what brought him there that day, but as he was entering into the mall, he decided to make a pit stop and go to the restroom first. And on his way down the hall, he just heard this voice in his heart or in his mind. He, he heard this voice. What would you do if a baby was choking? And then he goes to the restroom and then the voice hits him again. What would you do 
if a baby is choking. And then he's washed his hands. I don't know if he washed in 20 seconds then. I, I don't know. That's a different time. <laughs> different time back then. But as he was washing his hands, a third time, again, he heard a voice. What would you do if a baby is choking? And he was playing that out in his mind because he, he worked at Jeffrey's Power uh, Plant Station. And they had mandatory CPR classes. And he knew how to help a baby if it was choking. And so he played that out in his mind. And as he was leaving the restroom, he's walking down this hall, and a woman coming down the hall with a baby stroller, and this kid is just crying as loud as that kid could, and it had rice in a little bowl, and rice coming out of its mouth. And the kid was just crying and screaming, and all of a sudden, the baby stopped crying. And the baby kept on coming towards that, that kept on getting closer to the baby, and then the mother realized that this baby was choking. And the mother immediately snatches this kid out of the stroller and for whatever reason the woman begins to undress the child in the hallway and clearly she did not know what she was doing and and she was panicked and screaming and my dad went right behind her and just whispered into her ear exactly what to do and she did and the rice came out and the baby breathed and then it started crying all over again and then she just ran into the restroom with the child Dad just went on his way. But he'll never forget that time because he knew that God had prepared him for that moment because God was speaking to him way before that moment happened. Now, I believe that there are many of us who have experienced moments like this where we know that something told us. We'll say something told us or I just heard a little voice or I just felt like I needed to do this. Listen, listen to this. I truly believe that God still speaks to us today in ways that are so subtle and sometimes ways that are so loud that we must admit God spoke to us. God said something at that right moment, at that right time, and we made a move. Many people don't want to say it's God. Some people still want to say it was thunder. Some people still want to say it was something else or some force, but no, it was the living God. I wish to tell you it was the living God who spoke. And in Christianity, you must be so careful because you will have people who will come into your life and sometimes they'll come up to you during church and they'll look you dead in the eye and it's like, well, the Lord told me to tell you. Now listen, let's backtrack a little bit because I just said earlier that God does sometimes speak to our hearts and minds. He speaks to his children, but we have to be so careful because some people could actually manipulate you in that respect. Because just because uh, they, someone comes to you and says, God told me to tell you, the first thing you need to ask yourself is why didn't God tell me himself? Amen. I think that would be a very smart thing to do. And if the person who's coming to you telling you that God wants you to do this, you must Practically go to the Word of God. You must pray and ask God, does this align up with the vision and the, the revelation that you have given me? And it wouldn't be a bad idea to go to a few other brothers and sisters in Christ who may be a little bit more mature in Christ than you, who have been around a little bit longer than you, who know the Word very well, and ask them, well, so-and-so told me that God told, him, told me to tell me this, but I just want to make sure that this is coming from the Holy Spirit and not some other spirit. Christians, we must test the spirits, as it says in 1 John chapter 4. Be so careful where or whose voice you are listening to. There are things that should never be done in church because we realize it. Everything we do for God should be because of revelation, not realization. It has to come from God's revelation. God wishes to speak to his people and let them know what he would have us to do. I remember years ago when my oldest was just a baby, and uh, it was a very busy day. I was at the hospital, and I had to leave the hospital, and I went to the funeral home, and I was almost home. And then Jamie called me right before I was about to get home, and she said, hey, we need diapers. And I'm like, no! Because I was like so close to getting home and, and diapers are very crucial. That's not something you're like, ah, we'll wait in the morning for. No, you really need to get those when you need them. And so I turned around 
and I was going all the way back, and I, I, I pick up the diapers, I get out of there, and I, I get, well, I almost get home. And then right before, like right when I'm on Harris County, someone pulls out right in front of me with a trailer, and I had to step on the brakes, and I was this close to hitting, just right T-boning this person, and I was just like, you know how your, all your sinuses clear up, and your heart is just beating really fast, and you're like, whoa, that was a close one. And then when the person kept on going, and then I kept on going, thank the Lord that it wasn't serious. I said, God, thank you so much. And then I heard him speaking in my heart, hey, this is the first time you talked to me all day. And it's not something that I actually realized. And it, it just stopped me in my tracks. Christians, we can get so busy doing the work of God that we're not experiencing the God of the work. And we have to be so careful that we are returning to the source of energy, returning, returning to the source of the Spirit, and, and drawing on that Spirit and letting Him pour into us. We cannot go very long without speaking to our Lord Jesus Christ and spending time with Him. And how are we going to hear the revelations from God? If we do not spend time with God, have you heard the voice of God in your life? I asked some children years ago during our children's sermon, what do you think God's voice sounds like? And this sweet little girl raised her hand and she said, God sounds like love. And you can't find a better answer than that. He does sound like love. Yeah. And within the New Testament, we find three times that God audibly speaks to Jesus and those around Jesus. These three times are this. The first time God speaks is when Jesus is baptized. And in this beautiful moment, we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all in one place when Jesus is baptized. And God, he spoke and it said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased beautiful moment. Then a little bit later, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up on the top of a, of a hill, a mountain, and then he is transfigured before them, meaning that he shows them his glory, how he looks in a glorified state. And also, two very important people show up on the top of this mountain, uh, Moses and Elijah. Uh, one represented the law, one representing the prophets. And they were all meeting on top of this hill, and then God once again spoke, right? After Peter said, Jesus, it's good for us to be here. Let's stay here. God said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Amen. God still speaks in that way. We need to listen to Jesus. And this is the third time God speaks to Jesus and those around Jesus. And tonight we're going to look at what does this mean? What significant what significance does this mean for us that Jesus heard from his Father in heaven right before he's going to the cross in this moment? And I want you to just ask yourself in this moment, say, Self, how often have I heard the word of God in my heart? Have you heard from God? Have you spoke to God? Because Christians, what are you waiting on? Amen? I, I will tell you this. You can never pray too much. Amen? Well, let's look at this scripture a little closer. Let's look at verses 20 through 26 together. And a very interesting thing happens here. It says in verse 20 that certain Greeks among them came to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from the south. But saw of Galilee, and they asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip told Andrew, and Andrew and him told Jesus. And then Jesus doesn't even acknowledge uh, that these Greeks want to see him. I, I love how Jesus just goes into this, uh, uh, he, he preaches to him. He says, The hour has come. He's letting them know, hey, this is it, that the Son of Man shall be glorified. 
Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces what? Much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. Where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. I, I love this moment. What does this mean? John is letting us see how the movement of Jesus has just spread. These Greeks came from a long distance to come to see Jesus. And so, number one, this lets us know how far the movement of Jesus has reached. I mean, what Jesus has been doing, the miracles that he's performing, the way he was teaching all the people coming to Jesus, trying to see him, trying to be near him, to hear him, and to experience his healing power. They were coming from all around. Jesus had a far reach just in this moment of time. And bear in mind, Jesus had only been in active ministry roughly three years. That's pretty impressive. Amen? I mean, there, there have been many people who've had uh, ten times the amount of time Jesus got to minister. And Jesus did so much with so little time. And it's, it's, that's what Jesus does. He just does so much with just a little. Remember the fish and loaves? Amen? Uh, and just think about how Christ Jesus has used you. I think about how God has used me. Uh, without Christ Jesus, oh man, why well, I'm just nothing. Without Christ Jesus, uh, I wouldn't have the life of life in me. Uh, he just makes me a way better person. He really does. And, I, and some people might have said, well, Chris, you were pretty good. I remember you before Jesus. No, no, because I knew me before Jesus, and I didn't like you. You, you must understand this, that because I have come into a relationship with Jesus, as it says in the scripture, he who loves his life will lose it. But he who hates his life in this world, I like what this word also means. He who loves less, his life will lose for I've come to a place where, and every Christian should come to a place where you can say, I love Jesus more than anything. Amen? Amen. With no holding anything back or hold just a little bit in your hand, we just have to say, I just love you more than anything, Jesus. And some people get uh, just a little bit of flack by saying, well, I love Jesus more than my spouse. Or I love Jesus more than my children. Please listen to this. Me loving Jesus, my Savior, helps me love everyone much better. It helps me love them way more than I ever could have loved them on my own. He teaches me, whispers to me what sacrifice is, what love is, what light is, what truth is, what really matters. Jesus still speaks to us today in these ways. And he says that a seed must die. Jesus was letting them know what his mission was, that he was going to die but something beautiful was going to come from it. Life was going to spring from it. So these Greeks coming to him lets us know that Jesus had a far reach. But number two, that it also says what kind of people Jesus was drawing to him. Jesus was drawing all kinds of people to him. Amen? He, he uh, called fishermen. I love how uh, the, the Pharisees, the, the leaders of the law said these uneducated fishermen, that's what they called them in Acts. He called these uneducated fishermen. They were not trained in the law. He called a tax collector from the tax booth to follow someone who worked for the Roman government. And then he called this guy named Simon, who was a zealot, who was like a terrorist against the Roman government. He hated government and wanted to blow it up, all right? And so Jesus called a guy who worked for the government and a guy who hated the government, and they were all working together, doing the same things. Jesus brings so many different people together. And listen. Jesus still has a far reach today. And Jesus still brings very different people together. If you just sit and think about how many different people that Jesus has brought into your life because he brought you into the family of God. 
people you would have never met, people you never would have hung out with, people you never even would have had a conversation with. But because Christ Jesus, he brings us all together in this family that's knit together, not by any other thing, but in his spirit and his love and his story, his life that he gave to us. Because he was the seed that died, and something very beautiful came from it. I produced much grain. Christians, Mount Calvary was where Jesus was headed. Whenever it says that Jesus was heading to Jerusalem, Jesus was heading to Jerusalem the day he was born. When he took his first few steps as a toddler, he was heading to Jerusalem. He was always intended to walk to Jerusalem. Mount Calvary. That was his destination. And Christians, it says right here that uh, we must experience a death like he experienced. Paul reiterates this in Romans chapter 6, that we must die to ourselves. But he says this in Romans 6, verses 3 through 5. Listen to this. Do you not know? That all of us who have been baptized unto Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism unto death. So that, Jesus, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Is this very beautiful? Paul is, is comparing it to the symbolism of baptism. And I don't know how many of you have been baptized who's listening to this, but listen, baptism is not some magical water that you go in and you come out much cleaner than you ever have been clean in your life. That's not how it works. Baptism, water baptism is a symbol of what has already taken place in your heart, that your heart has been indwelled. Filled with the Holy Spirit, that Christ has, has come inside of you, and, and He's your Lord, and you've repented, and you've received Him inside of yourself. Baptism is just showing everyone and witnessing to everyone what has already taken place inside of you. And it's very beautiful because you're literally buried, submerged in water, as in death, and you're brought into newness of life. Uh, I love. Um, the last baptism service we had uh, last month, right? When I was getting ready to come out to preach, uh, a very cool guy, he's been seeking and searching the Lord. Uh, named Brother Craig, he came right into the, the, my office and said, Pastor Chris, is it too late? And I said, too late for what? He goes, you know, for baptism? He goes, yes, is it too late? I was like, no, it's never too late. You got to change your clothes? That's, all, that's the only thing I asked him. And he says, yeah, I brought him. And, and sure enough, he got baptized right there that morning. Uh, and I love his story. One day he's going to have to share his story with us. But he heard God speak to him. He accepted God's life into his life. He, he died so that Christ may live in him. He began to love less this life on earth. And love more the life in which Christ Jesus is offered. And Christ Jesus offers us eternal life. You cannot find any better deal on this planet than that. Amen. You can. And Jesus says in this moment to his followers, Where I am, there my servant will also be. Wherever you go, Jesus is with you. Jesus, at times... Uh, will walk right beside you. He wants to walk before you to take care of any problems that are on the way, but oftentimes we want to run ahead of him. We want to take Jesus some places where he don't want to go sometimes, amen? And he doesn't want you to go. But here's the trick, learning how to be still and follow him and listen to him. And then Jesus says these very uh, amazing words. Look at verse 27. He says, now my soul is troubled. Jesus is saying this. He said that his soul is troubled. In the Greek, that word is tarasos, which means to stir up or agitate. Christians, he was 
very close to his full purpose. He was getting closer to the very moment in which he would sacrifice himself. I would be troubled too. I would be more than troubled, to be honest with you. But he says, my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. I love this, Christians. From the moment Jesus began to walk, he was heading towards Jerusalem as he's getting closer and closer and closer as the time is getting nearer and nearer and nearer. He was going to suffer agony. He was going to suffer pain. He was going to suffer rejection. He was going to suffer. Here he was going to suffer for us an agonizing death. And my, my spirit would be troubled too. Amen. We don't even like the slightest little bit of inconvenience. And here's Jesus. He, he's knowingly stepping into a moment where he's not just going to experience the physical pain, but he was going to experience emotional pain, spiritual pain, pain that you and I won't even come close to understanding. And this is what Jesus was stepping into. And he says, Father, should I say, Father, save me from this hour? Didn't he tell his disciples, I could call 12 legions of angels to take care of you? No. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. There are many times in our lives where we call out to God because we don't like the situation we're in. We don't like the feeling that we're feeling. We don't like the, the um, hurt that we're going through. But is it possible, please bear with is it possible that that was the hour we were made for? Don't you think God knows you? He who shaped you? He who molded you, he who breathed life into you, don't you know what is good for you ultimately? That there will be things that we will face on this earth, and we don't want to face them, but for that hour, for that moment, Christ Jesus shaped you and, and, and made you. That you may confront it and, and, and go head on into it. Amen. And I promise you, he will speak to you the whole time if you listen. There are moments we don't want to walk. There's paths that we don't want to tread down, but Christ Jesus, he is with you, and he knows where you're headed. We had uh, just a sweet man who came here for years. He would sit right over in the corner over there, and he was very quiet, just so peaceful. His name was Daniel, and uh, he has a sweet wife named Mamie, and they're a little older. I'm not going to say that, that, you know, they're just a little older, amen, and one particular Sunday, as we preach a sermon, and sometimes, you know, a pastor will preach, and they'll just say, man, that was rough. Sometimes a pastor will preach, like, oh, I just didn't like that, you know? But, uh, and it was, I felt like it was one of those sermons where, like, ah, oh, I just, I could have done better, you know? And I was just standing there, and then I had my eyes closed, and then I opened them, and there was Daniel. And he had his wife with him, and his daughter was with him, and he said these powerful words. Because listen, this guy is well my senior. He's the oldest man in my ministry who, who's ever accepted Jesus. And he looked at me and he said, I have to get it right. I have to get it right. And Christians, it doesn't matter how old you are, we have to get it right. Amen. And it was so beautiful. Uh, he came forward, he was baptized as the old, oldest gentleman I've ever baptized. And uh, it was just a beautiful moment. And as life goes, several years later, we find him on hospice. And uh, during that time, his family was taking care of him. And they did such an amazing job of taking care of him. And they, he was able to stay home. And I remember uh, going by here and there, and one Saturday morning, God woke me up kind of early, and then I heard God's voice. He said, go and see Brother Daniel. And I said, all right. So I got dressed and went down there, and then I saw his whole family was there. So we walked in, and it was real close. And as we were all together as a family, we had a family prayer. And after the family prayer, I just looked at this baby, it's like this baby. Tell me the story how you met Mr. Daniel. And as she was telling the story of how they met and how their life began, 
his new life began, and he went to Jesus right in that moment. It was just beautiful and sad and wonderful all at once. It was beautiful because they were all together. It was sad because of who they were losing, but it was wonderful because we know the glory of the Lord, and we know where he went. It was just a beautiful moment. But I, I thank God that I listened to the Lord when I woke up that morning, and I heard him tell me, go and see Brother Brandon. I wonder how often God tries to speak to us in that same manner. And he's speaking to you right now. There's things that he wants you to do. There's things that he's trying to lead you to do. And it's for that hour that he's placed you here. We're each given a season. We've each, we're each given a moment. We don't have very long here. We don't know how long we have. And so Christians, while it is still life, while there's still time to work, while our, our feet are still working, we should listen to his voice and go and do what he's called us to do and be who he's called us to be. But then that voice came after Jesus said these words. And the voice from heaven said, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. Christians, he is still glorifying the name of Jesus Christ. And every chance the church gets, we should glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Christians, Jesus is still high and lifted up. Amen. And we should still continue to draw people in through prayer, through love, through genuineness, leading people to the Lord Jesus. Jesus spoke these words in power and in wonder. And so often, as in this moment, when God spoke, people said, oh, it was thunder. Some of them said it was an angel, but none of them said it was God speaking. Now, we know it was God because it says, I have glorified it. No angel can do that. No thunderbolt can do that. Only God can do that. Listen, Christians, I think too often we give credit to many other things other than God. We'll use so many terminology. We'll say the universe bless me. No, it wasn't the universe. It was the God who spoke the universe into existence. Sometimes we'll say, oh, karma. No, listen, this world is too awful for karma to be real. Why do bad things happen to good people? And good things happen to bad people? Well, I don't have the answers for that, Christians, other than to say this. God sends the rains on the righteous and on the unrighteous. He sends love to all of us. And no matter how long you live on this earth, you will experience trial and fire and test. You will experience pain and darkness. But here's the thing. Do you have the light of the world inside of you? The light of Jesus in you. Some people will say it's just a high power. Well, Christians, I don't believe that all paths lead to one God. I think if there was a God who did that, I think that's a very cruel God. You see, a God, a loving God, a God who would have breathed all this into existence, would have given us a understanding and a way to Him, and He would not cause chaos and confusion by saying, "Oh, look at all these paths." No. Truth is absolute. Truth is an absolute. And not many people like that. Some people don't like the law of God and the word of God. But listen, we don't break the word of God. We break ourselves against God's word. We break ourselves against God's law. Some of us, uh, and I can challenge you, and if y'all want to try to break the law of gravity, no, we can't do that because gravity is an absolute here on this earth. You will experience absolutes, and truth is one of them. God is truth. Now, I want to be very real and honest with you. I have never in my life heard God speak to me audibly. He has spoken to me through his word. He's spoken to me in my heart. He's brought things to my mind, and I knew that was from him. He's spoken to me through mentors and people that he placed in my life. There was just times in my life where I just felt so, uh, I was just heading in a way that I just felt so broken. And someone would come and just, they would say the right thing I needed to hear. I knew that was from God. Just the encouragement that we needed at times. 
But I've never heard God speak audibly to me like he did with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God spoke audibly to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And whenever you hear about them, they say God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because he's the God of the living. Amen. And he spoke to those three men. But here's something that you might have not considered. He spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but he never spoke to Joseph. That is so interesting to me. There's no place in Scripture where he audibly spoke to Joseph like he spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And listen, Joseph went through considerably a lot more than Abraham, Isaac, and jo uh, Jacob put together. Joseph, he was thrown into a pit with his, by his own brothers. Then he was sold into slavery. And then after he was sold into slavery, he was taken on as a servant. And then he was accused of something that he did not do. Ended up in prison for years. And through all of this, he never heard God speak audibly to himself. You know what I call that? Faith. I call that faith. He never, he never audibly heard God say, Joseph, it's all going to be all right. No, he just believed that the living God saw him, knew him, and would get him through it. In the troubles of our lives, that's when our faith shines. We don't need to hear him audibly. He's given us breath. He's given us creation. Haven't you ever held a baby? Haven't you ever experienced the beauties of this world? There are many beautiful things in this world. Just open your eyes and you'll see. And the very people who say there is no God, they're using the very breath that he gave them. God put Jonah in the belly of the fish. He sent Elijah to Cape, and he exiled John to an island just so that they would get a revelation. And so Christians, what do you think God is trying to reveal to you right now? And have you placed yourself in a position that you would hear his revelation if he tried to speak it to you? I love you so much, and I hope that you're taking this time to listen to him. Because God, he is trying to speak to you. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you and we love you for this time. God, it says in your word tonight that many of the rulers, many of the religious leaders, they believed in Jesus. But they loved the praise of men more than they loved the praise of God. And Lord, during this time of all times, Lord, let us love you more than our life. Let us love you more than all the pleasures of this world. Let us put you first in every measure of our life. God, that we might not only hear from you, but Lord, knowing fully well that whenever God spoke to us, whenever God ever spoke to somebody, it wasn't just for them. That revelation always helped many other people around us. And so, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would send this revelation, not for us, but so that we can help all those around us. And we love you and pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Thank you. Love you all.